Oh my gosh, this is crazy. If you're looking for deep truth and authenticity in a world that feels more and more artificial every day, you've come to the right place. If you're in need of a breath of fresh air, welcome. I'm Bianca. I'm Reagan. And this is a breath of fresh air podcast. Welcome. Nailed it, dude. You nailed it. It's because we had a nice prayer moment led by Reagan literally 30 seconds ago. And I feel like that should have been the intro, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we can try that. I thought about that as well. Yeah, that's a solid intro. But I think we're going to start with an awesome Buddhist parable. I don't know if that's accurate. but Yeah. Yeah, it's um, so we were just talking about how it's that saying that it's the finger pointing to the moon. So a lot of times we get hung up on certain teachings or even spiritual teachings that we think are the all in truth, but you know, it's actually the finger pointing to the moon. I'd never heard that before. And I love a good like metaphor, parable, allegory. That's, that's really interesting. So is the moon, the moon is like the end goal in this parable <laughs> like the moon is the truth the moon is the end all be all truth yeah yeah because I feel like a lot of time trying to can you even articulate God truly we're starting off so soft and gentle like this is the most casual intro you've ever had <laughs> wow okay can you say that again He's got I'm literally crying this is <laughs> Can you say that again? I wasn't ready. <laughs> it's like, can you truly articulate God? What are we even doing here? I think that's the end. We well, started. We're it's finger. We are the fingers, I suppose. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Although I don't know how to top that. Like you got to save the good stuff. You know, you kind of lead up and then you hit them. Hey, this you... is your idea. <laughs> Dang, that was so good. I feel like we could have a whole conversation on that thought alone can you even articulate god i mean it really is something i've been thinking about like the power of being being so much greater than like talking and definitely greater than thinking which i think that's a whole did we have a theme or are we just flowing we're just flowing okay because i don't want to take it somewhere and you're like bianca no, what are you talking cool. about well, flow to your heart's desires yeah i mean we were we were actually ironically talking about thinking before this too but yeah like the power of just being and feeling and re and I think that's the place where we realize things um and know them in an actualized way is not in the talking and thinking but in the being and the feeling yeah that I feel like that can move mountains because it's it's a deeper expression beyond, again, the stories and all the things that can sometimes keep us in the dream. Yeah. Can you talk about the dream? What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Where to begin? Where do I start? Um. So like, yeah, like, what is the dream? Or you could dive into what you're telling me about A Course in Miracles that's coming up for you and guiding you right now, the finger, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. So that's such an elegant way to, to put it, I think, is the way they put it in there, is like these two very distinctive, um, different thought systems. And one being knowledge, being knowing the truth of God, the eternal, unchanging law, and then on the other hand, and, and, and that, that's, that's the state of, of awakening. It's actually so simple because you're awake, you know, you're awake to who you are beyond all the ego overlays. And then there's the, the next, the other thought system is perception. And this is basically the dream. This is the duality. This is the perceiving, um, this is our mind 
in our ego all the basically stories that keep us separate from God and keep us separate from who we really are. And it it's really that simple, even though like it seems so complicated because the ego likes complicated things. And so we go through immense effort to, we don't realize it, most of it's unconscious until you start truly opening your heart to God, I think. But we go through immense effort basically trying to to live in this dream, to stay separate from God. Yeah. And I think that's why, like you starting off with, with that, um, I like metaphor, I guess, about the finger pointing to the moon is that it is so easy to get caught up and make the means to an end, which isn't really the best way to say it. Cause like, it's not really the point either, but to like, forget where, where we started and why we started, like, what something is actually for and like to make that thing everything so for example like even if you make it something like super practical like a career like a career is typically something that's supposed to fuel your life and enhance your life and like allow you to spend time with your family in ways that matter to you if that's something that you value or like something that sustains you in some way but then people will start in that career and forget that it was like a vehicle for other things in their life that matter. And then that becomes everything. And I think that that finger points to the moon could apply on so many different levels of so many different things. Um, what does that make you think of? Yeah, it's, uh, I guess the first thing is, is that word forget forgetfulness. I think mm. that the key of like the perception and it really is so simple um just to forget and it's a lot of and I I, I feel this so strongly because I myself of course was like this until very recently I finally kind of was in a state where I could truly open up to God in a new way but um the ego doesn't like um <laughs> this doesn't like to, to hear that it doesn't like to hear that it's um because it means it's death. And that's kind of what the ego is, I think, obsessed with is is death or preventing its death. And the return to God is kind of it's passing away into eternity and it realizing that all of these stories and it sounds super impractical to the ego because the ego doesn't understand what unifying with God actually means. Hmm. Profound. Because it doesn't it, yeah. It doesn't mean you're renouncing the dream as much as it means you're you're coming back into um like you're playing the game now instead of getting played by the game. It's like we're all just getting so played by our own game and we don't even realize it because we're so deep in the dream. Excuse me while I try to have a conversation and at the same time my mind is melting and like <laughs> coming back together and like here but I'm like blown away <laughs> it's like it's a hard balance but yeah um I think that's so powerful and something that I resonate with so deeply of like there's this constant dance happening when you're intentionally living a life of like trying to get closer to God in whatever way that that whatever that means for you and whether you say the word God or you you know, if you're not comfortable with that word, because some people do have that relationship um, where it's it's difficult to feel that the word God represents uh, all that God is. But yeah, it's like there's this constant dance of like getting closer to God. And then the closer you get to God, the more that the ego is like, wait, 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 wait. Or mm -hmm. like, but did you think about it like this? Or did you think about that? Or even like circumstances in life can start to come up that um that make it hard to stay in the space of like communion with god really um that groundedness in the knowledge of like who we are and like to the degree that we know why we're here because i think there's always some there's some level of like 
mystery in that inherently that we'll never really unveil all of it and there's like there's a whole we've had conversations about that too but yeah I think there's like this dance is what I'm trying to say between the ego and then the part of us that is like already our highest self that I think actually is within us and we're life is just us realizing there's never really been a separation between our highest self and who we are we just don't realize it and then when we realize it that's when we live it out but yeah there's like this constant dance that's so beautifully said yeah it reminds me of something I heard years ago that I still think about because it's so true is like when you when you do um, come back into that state even if it's temporarily of feeling that state of eternity you realize that you never left and that's what's real that's what's real and then and then what do we do we go back into the dream we go back into the um the game that we're playing and that's and that's really the thing what's coming up now too that is so important to understand is that the that's i think a, a core part of awakening or the journey to awakening is is full responsibility for what you're thinking Oh, I don't like that. <laughs> Real. Uh, what does that mean? Because, and this is so crazy, um, because we are, again, creating, um, like I, I said before, there are no such thing as idle thoughts. It's like, we are so, I think that's part of the dream is we become so, um, what's the word? Lazy is not the right word, but it's sort of just like, allowing for like any thought to kind of just come in and and we don't even sometimes realize how much we're identifying with those thoughts and believing in those thoughts that keep us in a box and it so it's like and then those thoughts can go on if we keep feeding them to create or miscreate you could say even our reality so what's really strange about you know awakening that I've been feeling more like on these different levels is you start realizing that you really are creating a reality. And I know that's kind of like a, a buzzword in the spiritual community, but even your problems, even these things that, um, you know, you don't like or are causing your suffering, it's like, it takes a lot of strength, I think. And that's why you have to be in unity with God because it's not, it, there's, it's nothing about feeling shame or guilt. It's just accepting as a fact that taking responsibility for what you are believing in and then creating through I guess kind of like the meaning that you're assigning everything I think that's interesting I think so when you said you we have to be responsible for all of our thoughts I immediately felt uncomfortable <laughs> because I do feel that some of our thoughts don't originate from within us Exactly. I think some of our thoughts originate from things that we're being persuaded at times, maybe less so persuasion and most more so like thoughts are kind of like implanted from media sometimes or like other people. I think when you're around people a lot, like the way they think influences your thoughts. Um, but I think what, what I hear is like, you're saying like our response to those thoughts, like, what we're watering, like what we're giving more attention to, what we're like feeding is what you said, which is, I feel almost like a distinction from just the thinking itself. It's like, what are you doing with these thoughts in your head? Exactly. And that's so real. And that's, you know, in a way like, and again, it's not at all because that that's the thing about God, the real God is like, God never wants you to feel um like blame and like all this bullshit that like our ego god wants us to feel that's that's our egos that wants that wants to keep us in that because that's what validates its illusion but yeah most of those thoughts almost all of them don't come from us they don't originate from who we really are they they're voices of the people that we were raised by and you know media and um all of our like protection mechanisms we learned as children in order to survive and feel safe in the chaotic and hostile environments most of us were raised in and so like we made those voices god and we um speaking of Kyle Cease, he had a really good analogy it's like it's like if you left home as, as a child and, and 
you forgot you had parents. And so like, you just like, you, you never had like, I don't know how he said it, but it was like, he so said, you never had parents. So you just meet new people and you're like, oh, they're my parents. Mm. But that with God, it's like, we forgot God. We think God abandoned us. We don't realize that we actually abandoned God, not through our own necessarily fault because we're born into this world. Um, so again, it's not a blame thing, but it's like there is a need to take total responsibility in order to liberate yourself. So when he says, it's like you went away from home and you're like, these people are my parents. Is that him speaking on like you finding healthier voices to have in the place of that? Or like we forget our real origins and we like adopt this relationship that kind of takes us further away from from who we really are yeah more more the latter it's like because then it's like you just forget it's like oh yeah I never had I never had parents it's like it's it's just you know this is um I don't know I guess I'm not doing justice to the analogy but it was funny because then he even said like even though that's like your parents were kind of like the the diversion from <laughs> from who you really are from source from that within you um so it is a funny analogy but yeah, just forgetting, forgetting. And again, I can't emphasize enough how how beautifully simple it really is. And I think that's why the ego wants to literally like crucify it. It wants to, it wants to kind of crucify the truth, honestly. And I'm not saying that the evil that the ego is necessarily evil, but that's just kind of its inherent function to stay alive, is it wants everything to be a drama. It wants everything to be a story. It needs it. So that's what's crazy about, at least in my experience, like waking up to like more and more you start realizing like dude um this part of me is creating these dramas I'm I'm actually creating these dramas and and it has less to do with the actual circumstances but more with again like the meaning that you're assigning the things like outside of you yeah something you said made me think of a quote that I have written and I'm gonna just grab <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it's ready it's hot and ready I, I can find it um this might take me a second maybe not but I was telling you how I've been slowly working my way through Bhagavad Gita and this was actually like something in the introduction but it was speaking on did I write it down it was speaking on what you said like what we experience something to the effect of like we only experience the world through our nervous system we don't experience the actual world we experience our nervous system and like that's being projected onto the world and it just reminded me of what you were saying that like something that i that, that i've said a lot is like we perceive reality as we are not as it is mm -hmm. And, you know, five people can be in the same room and someone can be up giving a toast or something. And person one is like, wow, it was such a beautiful, heartfelt toast. Like, I really felt that. Like, that was so genuine. And person two is like, why would they wear that? Like, that's not even, they didn't even look right. Like, why were they up there? I should have been up there. And person three is like, yeah, I, I tried to give the toast and they wouldn't let me give the toast. And like, they're in that narrative. And then, I don't know, person four is like, so proud of you like this is my brother like yeah 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 and person five is like that's exactly who should have been up there they all are in the same room and heard the same exact speech but like the meaning that they created from the event was so different because of the way they were wired because of their context to like their nervous system their personal like dramas their personal feelings about this person or whatever dictated what they actually perceived even though they all literally in a way saw the same thing they also literally didn't yes yeah. I should just describe that so beautifully again like this thought system of perception it's like completely open to interpretation you know versus like the truth of God is eternal and unchanging yeah and I feel like it's also connected to other things like when we talk about you know like Eckhart Tolle I feel like in the West was really influential in um, introducing like mindfulness. Of course, it did not originate with Eckhart Tolle. And like, we know that. And it it's not, it's like an Eastern practice, but he really did introduce that in the West and the idea of like becoming the observer of your thoughts. 
And I thought of it one time as like being the observer versus the observed. Because when you're constantly thinking about how you're being observed, how you're being perceived, you're automatically like just in a lower state of being than when you're like observing yourself and kind of just like not put passing that on to other people, if that makes sense. Like, I'm not asking you to tell me who I am or whatever. And it's not about like, if you came to me as a friend or like Bianca, that was like fucked up. <laughs> be like, yeah, fair. You're my friend. That's accountability. But like, I'm not like, Re I need Reagan to think I'm good. Like, I need Reagan to think this or I need Reagan to think that. So like kind of, it also is connected to becoming the observer of all of that mental play and not not passing that on does that make sense to you I don't know yeah okay exactly, exactly. and I love that you brought up Eckhart Tolle because I even though I haven't like seen his work in a while like hit that his teachings have been coming up in my mind a lot as I've been going through like this next level of awakening because I'm just realizing like yeah like that's the truth like the present moment the now we're always trying to get to something else and again like I was saying earlier before we started recording it's like I think that many of us if not all of us we really have to for us to truly accept that like full on it's like we have to get to this point where we've exhausted our ego's desires so much so many times to realize that it's just not the way it's 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 not the way it's absolutely um it's meaning it's actually meaningless really it's the we, we're giving it meaning through our perception but it really feels like a treadmill and it's like you can be running going nowhere fast you're literally going nowhere <laughs> because you're you're so fixated on something that doesn't exist you know like whereas everything that is real is here now and until you genuinely full on accept and embody right now and this is the work and this is the practice this is the true practice the skill of awakening of being awake you know it's it's not um, a concept. It's really a skill of like, okay, like I'm going to practice being awake in every now moment, realizing that I have everything I need to know every now moment and everything I need is always coming to me. And it's really a magical way of being that, you know, people, I think more people are starting to tap into because it, it, it involves a lot of faith because the ego isn't faithful. The ego is like, no, I have to do it. No, I have to make sure that, you know, I have to use all of my mechanisms in schemes and manipulations that I've learned to make sure that everything is going to be how I need it to be pretty much, you know, whereas like, it's, it's really a whole new level of being of coming into like, this is all that is real. It's coming back into communion and unity with God. And I'm definitely not saying like, I'm there yet, you know, it's just like, I'm practicing, but it truly is a new way of being. And I think as you practice it, really wholeheartedly again like you're at that point where like you truly have exhausted your ego's desires to the point where they're no longer seductive they're no longer seductive like they were before of like because I remember you know before I would understand that to some degree but then I'd be like okay that's nice I'm bored I need to do something else <laughs> you know what I mean and then there I go on the treadmill again and then but that's how you learn you know and then you suffer and you suffer and you just you know I think awakening it's really awakening from that um suffering that comes with being separate from God and like it's like it's like part of you is like trying to find something to fill that void that is the separation but it's meaningless it's futile because you're you're searching within the separation for unity with God but like you know what I mean but like unity with God is now here like and um the last thing I'll say about that that's coming up is like so when you really start being present for real wholeheartedly oops um that's all real these, <laughs> all of these ego overlays will start appearing to you and 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 whereas they used to be something that would be like I'm going to jump right into that narrative it's like you start seeing it like oh this is a narrative mm. yeah do you want to take a pause or are you okay if we we can pause for you to no 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 I'm good I'm good I just um I was You're on a you're a pro because the light just came back on the light <laughs> answered my question like the light was like ding and I was like oh, okay um yeah I 
sometimes stuff, something, and this happens a lot when you're having these conversations. It's like something just feels so true that I just feel at peace. Like I don't, want, the urge is not to like jump in and say something. I get actually very quiet in my mind. I'm like, this is not the best moment to just feel like, what is it that you said? Eternal sunshine of the spotless mind. Like, can we turn that off for a second? I'm trying to think actually, but I can't because I'm just like, I don't know. It's so satisfying to hear the truth. I don't know. It just. It's beautiful. It hits a button in my brain. that's like now powering off. Uh, And maybe that's me moving into my heart, which is good. But I have lost my train of thought entirely. I think you need to keep talking. (laughs) That's so funny. I feel like it's like kind of full circle from the beginning, though, because it's like you can't. How does one articulate God? just silence, just stillness, just presence, like be here with us now. That's really, that's really the best truth someone can give you. But the ego mind again, it's going to be like, well, what the fuck? Like, that's boring. Like, what the heck? Like, I need something. (laughs) That was my, you just, you know what? That was where I was going to go. I heard someone say that, like, basically when you're used to like chaos and drama, peace feels like boredom. Mm Mm-hmm. And so I think there is like, I've experienced like some level of like sabotaging my own peace because I was like, there's no way like this is the right, I'm not doing this right. Cause why do I feel bored? But it's like, kind of like detoxing from a life of drama and chaos can feel boring. That's exactly right. I feel that too. And that's another thing like I just I'm so grateful because like again I feel like for the first time in my life that I remember at least like maybe when I was a baby you know like I feel like when we're babies we're probably pretty enlightened (laughs) um like just allowing that because like I'm just at this point again where I'm I'm truly I truly to at least to the full extent that I'm able to see is like I just feel so um yeah just like done with these ego uh character narratives like running my show and so like I've had to take a few days to really let that sink in because it's so automatic I think and 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 in drama is really the right word honestly it's like and that's where again we have to take responsibility in a loving compassionate way for ourselves and for others but that's really what the ego is all about. I mean, and 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 we identify with ego. So we're like, oh my God, like I'm in the drama. Like it's always a drama. Like even if it's not necessarily like, you know, people think like drama, like gossiping with other people, just even within your own self, it's like something happens and it's like lights, camera, action. Like just like, I'm going to have a fucking conniption <laughs> because my ego is so triggered. Like just like, rolling <laughs> i love your vocab words between <laughs> percolate and conniption like <laughs> i'm just like really happy <laughs> <laughs> uh also the the like dance move you just did before you said conniption i think we need to make that slow-mo because that was epic <laughs> um yeah yeah i mean i I definitely felt like it's interesting. I feel like every time I've reached a moment of like, and moment is the operative word. I'll have like a moment of really like utter peace, like true, genuine peace. It feels for me that like right after I'll just sit into chaos because it's like, I've, I've, I think I've told you this, but I am in a time where I'm trying to intentionally increase my capacity for good things to hold good things because it takes a different skill set to acquire something than it does to maintain it and like I think that applies to like almost anything including the not tangible things like peace and healthy relationships right like making a friend is probably as simple as like you strike up a conversation with someone you have something in common cool but like maintaining a friendship is like reaching out like being okay with times where like being okay with disappointments holding space for disappointments like it takes a different skill set to acquire friendship maintain a friendship and I think the same thing with peace and because my nervous system has been so conditioned to chaos and like toxicity 
at times and things like that. I think sometimes I'm like, I've sabotaged my own peace because I, I haven't known how to hold it and how to keep it, how to maintain it. Yeah, absolutely. Same. I mean, that's literally what we do. I mean, that really is what the ego does is it, it, it needs drama. It has to sabotage in a way, you know, and, and even the pleasure that it will get is just like a temporary part of like the whole story that it's living out, if that makes sense. Yeah. The thought in my head that when you're saying that is kind of like the ego is kind of always on a narrative of like, everything's gone to shit. Mm -hmm. Everything's going to shit. And then the louder that, or the more we feed that voice, the more we give weight to that narrative, the more we align our actions with that narrative, it becomes true. And so then our ego is like, see, I told you everything's going to shit. You should always listen to me because everything's always going to shit. And you always need to just accept that. And it just completely diverts the attention away from any other reality. And, you know, it, it increases the familiarity with those realities, the realities of like everything going wrong. And so we become less and less comfortable. And we really actually, in some way, I think don't feel safe because it's unfamiliar. So we're like, ah, I know what this is. Don't know what that is. So I'm just going to go with what I know until, like you said, it's just like we're so burnt out on it. It's like, look, this just doesn't work. Like, this isn't fun. This life shouldn't feel like this. I'm tired of it. Yeah, it's the dream. That's perfectly how you described it. That is literally the dream. That's how we go into the dream. And we, it's so crazy how we don't realize that we are manifesting it. And again, um, I just think it's so important to take responsibility for that. And, and again, it, it's almost kind of just like in a lighthearted way, you know, because when you're really present with the space now, you can see these little like, they're like little tornadoes, like, you know what I mean? And like, you can like be in that tornado or you can like see, okay, like here comes the narrative. Like here comes the, I'm not good enough. Here comes the, what do I need to do to um, maintain basically like, because another thing that's really interesting that I think is true, and again, this takes responsibility. Um, and, and again, just in a, you know, something that we can even be lighthearted about or like laugh about, you know, not in a mocking way, but just in a haha, you know, way um, is that there's, when we, when we're, when we're still chasing these like ego um, desires, in these dramas and these stories and this lack of peace, this lack of presence. It's like, there's something in us that even if we're, it's killing us, it's like, we're like an addict almost. It's like, we're getting something out of it. Yeah. It's interesting that you were the, use the word addict. I saw this like thread. I'm really bad for like dopamine seeking behaviors. So I'm just like scrolling is a, is a thing that I do but it was a, a really interesting point they made it was like um addiction is like a progressive narrowing of um what makes us feel good and basically like expand our like healing or progression is like a expansion of like what makes us feel good or allowing kind of like allowing things in that make us feel good so it's like really interesting because I think it is if you if you if you know really you boil it down the ego is very fixated on control which i think is another illusion mm -hmm. like uh this illusion that we can be in complete control of anything because there's just too there's too many variables like we can never have complete control and that's not the goal but the ego makes that the goal and it's very when you expand that like zoom you zoom in on the lens of like how can I get control or feel like I have control you kind of like create these like blinders to anything else in life that exists without outside of what you view as controllable and all of the good things in life come to you or you feel them and let them in when you let go of trying to control all the variables like I've never made a friend and it was like, I'm going to 
I'm going to, this is going to happen like this. And they're going to show up like that. And then this is going to happen. And then we're going to have this exact conversation. And then we're going to go there. It's like always been like flow to people kind of just like, whoa, yeah, cool. And I could have never planned it. Like the best things in my life were things that I could have never planned. So it's like, yeah, really interesting that you said like add it because there's such an overlap between what addiction can do in a person's life and like when the ego is just like running rampant what it does to a person's life yeah dude I think you just explained that so well too with like the friendship that's such a great example of like when you when you really break it down because like that's the thing is I don't think people are really aware of what they're thinking because they're they're just they're so used to it you know what I mean like I remember when I started writing down my actual thoughts I was like I'm thinking that like that is such a menacing thought but that like um <laughs> the way you said that is like <laughs> it just shows you how insane the ego's logic is like like yeah I'm gonna make a friend and we're gonna have this conversation and this and that and that it's like maybe in like because genuinely I, I really feel like the like light of our awareness as a as a human species on earth is growing so it's like there's things like that that maybe like you know that level of control used to work because it's like that with everything with like a, a business or relationships or whatever but now like I really don't think that it works and I think that's why we're having such a sort of like breakdown in a lot of individuals and in societies because that egotistical way of control is just absolutely it used to kind of work but it, it's like it's kind of not I just don't think it's even working anymore. And I think it's like our whole mission is to reunite with God and let God work through you. And it, and it what's difficult about that is it's it really is a whole new way of being. And um, again, like different layers of our egos, like really have trouble truly accepting that because it again, it's an ego death. It's like, okay, like the ego, you you just hang out here. Like you don't do anything. You don't need to go off and do really anything. Like you just chill out and let God work and like give it to God and let God, because that's what really, that's when the most miraculous things happen is when God is working through you. And I truly think that's like our natural divine state, that unified state, or people call it 5D or whatever you want to call it. Like that's that's like the garden of Eden is like when you're in communion with God in the present moment and just letting God work through you. And then when you're in that, that's like, that's, so when you're like able to experience that, you can start to see more and more clearly how all this other stuff that we've been doing has literally been us in our own illusion. It's been us in our own dream. Yeah. That, oh, that made me think of so many different things. And now none of them are here. But one of them is like, I think something I think about is how we can't really expect to maintain a feeling or a state of well-being when like our reality isn't aligned with it. So trying to hold on to relationships or environments or sometimes it does come down to stuff as simple as like what we literally consume like the food we're eating or um like what it's like you can't constantly put yourself in a state of like being uh essentially like attacked from different angles and expect to maintain a state of peace and you also can't think that there's something wrong with you when that's your reality like there's not something wrong with you like your body your nervous system is just responding to the things in its environment and like I think sometimes there's a sense of like well maybe if I just meditate more or like and there's like yeah you can do things to increase your well-being and you can do things to cope with a certain situation but like if you're in an unhealthy situation it's going to have a certain effect on your health regardless of like how much you meditate like sometimes it's the simple thing of like leaving a friendship leaving a relationship you know making the and sometimes it's it's simple but it's a hard thing like yeah maybe that person just isn't 
someone you're ever going to have a good relationship with. It's not about you, like, doing Jedi mind tricks on yourself <laughs> to, like, <laughs> make it different than it is. Like, sometimes just, like, the acceptance that, like, and maybe that's another way the ego tries to control. Maybe it's a spiritual ego of, like, if I'm just good enough spiritually, I can convert anything into a good situation. It's like, no, some stuff is just not good for you. And, like, you probably can, like, you know, cope with that thing. But, like, can you cope with that unhealthy dynamic and the diet that you're eating and the content that you're consuming and the fact that you're not sleeping enough and the fact that you're just, like, drinking caffeine all day and you have no moment of, like, reflection? Like, you're not going to feel good. It's not a reflection of, like, not being, like, good enough. It's just, like, your body is telling you that it doesn't feel good in this environment. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if that was a ramble, but I think about that. Yeah, no, I feel that. I know I feel like you because it, it's like that made me think of a few things. And then now like they all just sort of like, like, but it is. That's so real. That's so real. I remember I was going to say because it's like all of that stuff you're saying, too. Like, I feel like when you're truly present, it's it's actually very um, simple. And when you're really in a state. As, and again, I know this is a practice, but I think when you're really in a state of presence and unconditional love, all of that stuff is so simple because it's like, okay, I need to go here. I need to, okay, like, I'm not going to listen to this. Okay, like this person, like, I'm not going to be around them. Or it's like, it's all simple. It's like, that's it. But then it's like in the ego, it's like, if I leave this person, then I, like, we have a whole fucking drama about they're a bad person or I'm a bad person or like this whole guilt trip type thing sometimes or like whatever it is like we have these whole narratives and it's like that's not a good or a bad thing it's just I feel like it's kind of empty it's like meaningless it's like that's just the drama your mind is creating like when you're present it's just like okay this is this is what I am or like it's almost like, you know, you just know the next step, but it doesn't even feel like the next step. It just kind of feels like, yeah, like, I don't know, like a flow, like you don't have to have, and again, this is a practice, but like all the guilt, I think that comes from what we're doing or what we want to do or like what we need to do, you know? Yeah. Can you talk more about the guilt? Oh, guilt. Guilt is a hell of a drug. Oh my gosh you know I said it all <laughs> yeah it really really is and I just because like I can just feel it like I don't feel guilt right now but like I know that feeling like it, it's just so heavy in your heart you know it's so heavy and like I said in the previous like just not too long ago it's like I really don't believe that God wants us to feel guilt you know I think this is guilt can be something that can safeguard you against I suppose like hurting someone you know maybe that's its proper function but to just live in guilt about who you are or about what you're doing or about your past see that's the thing is like that's another aspect of the dream is we don't even realize to the extent that we are little we are living in our past It kind of reminds me of um, worry. You know, it's a different, kind of a different sensation as a guilt, but that's one thing I can really speak on because I, I feel like that was kind of what might have, what kind of like birthed me into this like place I am right now is like, I've just carried so much worry, like learned worry, you know, worry just, and I feel it like very specifically, like in my heart, like, and I feel like I've had it my whole life and all of a sudden it was like I think like it's almost like the light gets so bright that it's just you can't hide from it anymore I don't know how to explain it but it's like all of a sudden it's like it's like spotlighted it's like oh my god this worry and I went through a, a I don't know crazy sort of energetic transformation with it that's hard to be put into words but um I think something I can share from it is It's like it, it's like worshiping your fear where it is and a lot of you know it's one thing if there's actually a threat but most of the time it's just 
worshiping fear you're you're putting you're making fear your god and again like to a wounded ego that's going to be like triggering but at the same time it's like allow that you can allow that trigger to reveal to you why it's why it's triggering you you know because it's like when you're triggered it's usually because you're kind of working really hard to defend an illusion yeah i feel like so many things came up for me with that but someone kind of phrased it this way one time it's like it's going to take the same amount of energy to go after whatever thing you're fearful of doing like for your growth or for your um you know for whatever your your dream is to do in life it's going to take the same amount of energy actually to do that as the amount of fear that you're holding and like you you won't that you're not letting go of um and I guess that is kind of like the exchange like you kind of have to like allow the fear to move through you because it's there it's in there you know it has to go somewhere it has to move through you I felt that in a very literal sense recently um there's so many things is what you said um going back to guilt like that is something that I've that I've you know grappled with and I've heard it described as like guilt is I feel bad for what I did shame is like I feel bad for who I am and Mm -hmm. shame is is not it's a very low like vibrational state of being Mm -hmm. typically people who are abusive aim to keep you in that state or put you in that state because it's easy to manipulate people when they're in a state of shame about who they are you know, I, I don't like who I am. It's a very abusive thing. It's similar to, it's like so many things are connecting for me in my mind and I don't know if I'll be able to articulate it like in the way that I am, it's clicking into place on my head. But like, for example, when you get sick, your body responds by getting inflamed to fight off an infection or even a bruise. Your body responds with inflammation that's a healthy response what's unhealthy is when your body can't tell an external threat like a real external threat from just a normal process in your body and that causes chronic inflammation which is disease which is this you know sickness it's perpetually in your system because your body can no longer determine what is an external threat and what's just a normal part of like your your essence your body just processing its daily thing like your body's just chronically inflamed and I feel like it's a similar thing with what we're talking about like there's a level of of you know you're healthy when your body responds to a threat with that inflammation response you know you're not healthy when your system is responding with an inflammatory response and there's no external threat because your body's never healed from the previous threats that were that happened or occurred the previous traumas or whatever and so it's in a perpetual state of inflammation and you can't even tell anymore what's healthy and what isn't because until that moves through you or until you you know find the healing that those things need everything's going to be perceived as a threat which goes back to we experience the world through our nervous system, which is like us all living these subjective realities. And if you're aiming for peace, like you're going to have to, you're going to have to regulate that and create a system that is habituated to peace more than threat. And I don't know how I got there from what you just said, but it is what came through based on what you just said yeah yeah I mean it makes total sense it's you know I feel like everything comes through for a reason yeah so I I don't know I think that's the discernment that I was trying to talk about earlier with some people feel that there's something wrong with them that they're not feeling good in certain relationships and it's like it's not necessarily anything wrong with you. Like maybe that person just isn't nice to you. 
you know, like that person isn't nice to you. It's normal to feel uncomfortable when someone's not being kind. And that's not a sign that there's anything wrong with you. And I think that links back to shame and the guilt and the narrowing and the ego latching on to stories of like, if I have a shame story, then I'm going to perceive everything as being my fault and something I need to fix within myself instead of like this expansive understanding that like, sometimes things are my fault. Sometimes it had nothing to do with me. Sometimes I feel bad because I just need to feel my feelings. And sometimes I feel bad because that person did something that made me uncomfortable. And sometimes I'm stuck feeling bad because I didn't feel the things <laughs> that I needed to feel from three years ago. And like, I think healing is just being able to tell the difference between all of those. And I feel like our conversation made me think of that. So yes, that is my final thoughts on that. Yeah, that's so beautiful. That's okay. so, no, that's so real. That's so important. You know what I mean? I feel like that is so like, yeah, just like the space that we're coming into. Yeah. I'm just sitting with that. Do you have any additional thoughts on my thoughts to your thoughts? Yeah, I'm kind of just sitting with it as well. It is, um, it's a very interesting one. I feel like it's a big root, you know, speaking of just like the ego and the dream, like, I don't know. It's almost as if there is like an inherent guilt from the separation that's like very unconscious. You know, it's very unconscious. And that's like another reason I think like, you know, that ego version of us seeks for something to fill that void, you know? And I guess it comes down to, this is something that came up earlier. I can't remember what you said that made me think of it, but wholeness. It's like wholeness can only come from within you. When you really, really, are willing to see and accept what you are you know dude wholeness i love bringing that back because i feel like yeah what's coming through for you right now with that it's just it's so obvious to me how right now how how much we strive trying to like achieve wholeness and it's literally a treadmill because it can only it, and again it sounds cliche but truly it's like all that stuff is meaningless like it can only come from within you you know like you will never find it outside of you like there's nothing that this world can give you that you can't give yourself well god it really what like realizing what god has given you it's like that's been the words that's been coming up is like accepting your divine inheritance that is your wholeness um you know what I mean? Yeah, I think what comes up for me right now when I think about wholeness is like space to just allow all the parts of you to exist. And I think, you know, that's really hard for me personally of like, I'm really cool with a part of me that's like calm and grounded and like practical and logical but I'm not so cool all the time with the part of me that's like angry or like the part of me that doesn't feel good on some days or the, uh you know but even something as simple as like maybe something you tell a child really reassured me the other day I was like I'm just having a rainy day <laughs> you know the weather can be rainy and sunny like I can be rainy and sunny like I can have cloudy days that's okay sounds like something you put in like a Mr. Rogers show but it made me feel better so for me right now like wholeness is like yeah like allowing all of you to exist and not not shaming those parts that aren't pretty and not like judging yourself harshly and I do think having that increased capacity to hold ourselves with compassion it creates more pathways for us to extend it outward I think that's when it's like our compassion is genuine and not pity because that's a different conversation. Some people think love is pity and it's not. It's like a codependent thing. Like, I feel bad for you. So like, I want to help you. And that's like, that's not really compassion. That's like in some way you're playing out roles of like, I need you to 
be a little bit worse off than me so I can feel good like I'm helping you like I'm like I'm rescuing you and I Mm -hmm. think being able to hold space for the part of us that is not feeling good or the part of us that is feeling shame for the part all these complex parts of us we can actually meet people more at the level of like compassion versus like this like need for it to be like I'm this understanding person and I'm coming in you know yes dude I love that you brought that up because one so many things like just so many like codependent things that we do that we think is like god but it's just codependency and I feel like that's another just theme that many of us will experience as we continue to awaken but I'm also glad you brought up just the compassion for yourself and for others because that was something I kind of wanted to segue into that I think is really important on this whole topic so in this book um, it really emphasizes the point that um, the the whole goal of like the miracle-minded is to heal the separation or restore the sonship it's the whole goal and it's like it's really the only thing that makes sense outside of the dream because in the dream you're like you know you're chasing your tail on all this stuff that doesn't (laughs) really doesn't even matter but like to come back into like who you really are waking up from the dream the whole point is basically coming into union with god and also learning how to um how to how to truly be helpful to like all of our brothers and sisters because it's like until we all come to that sort of return that awareness we're going to be in the dream and we're all connected to it because we're all unified really you know we're all so it's like I don't know it made me think of that because like you said I think that's really wise because I think that's an essential thing is like is having is like as you're awakening having that compassion for the parts of you that every part of you every part of you that comes up that feels like it's fragmented it's like you have to learn how to love and hold space for that you know what I mean in that kind of a way genuinely and then also for others because like in the book like the that's like really I'm not very far but from what I understand like that's pretty much the whole point of like miracles in this at least in the context of that book is to assist our brothers and sisters in in coming back into like their wholeness if that makes sense healing the separation yeah yeah i think i think about i guess i could even say i meditate on healing <laughs> a lot um but i've often kind of grappled with like what actually brings more healing the um the path where I really sit with and it feels almost selfish but like sit with and really pay a lot of attention to what's going on within me and I feel like it's always a balance but for me I've I've kind of at times felt like maybe that doesn't do that much but then I've met people who I could tell have really done that inner work and like living they're living from a place of joy and expansion and in those moments I was like oh that's not selfish at all like what they're doing the place they're living from is so expansive that even being around it makes me understand life is so much more I'm like, there's nothing really selfish about that. And I think it's kind of like to put your mask on, right? Like if the airplane's going down, put your mask on first or you can help anyone else. Like I think when we, when we approach like this idea of helping other people from a place of like trying to prove something or like our idea of what helping is, is, is really rooted in like this inadequacy because we haven't sat with ourselves I think it does perpetuate harm because Mm -hmm. from that state, it's like you need to be the helper and you need someone to need your help. Whereas what you're talking about is like really about empowerment. It's like, how do we get to a place where everyone is empowered in who they are? And I'm not, 
not like reaching my hand down to you, but it's like, I'm joining hands with you. And like, we're here understanding we're all equal. We're all in this. And like your success is my success. Not in that I'm claiming it, but like you being successful is the goal. Like not me claiming it, but I feel it. Like I'm happy for you. I want you to be that best version of you. And that's a different energy. And I, and I do feel that I've come to a point that I think we have to sit with ourselves a good amount before we can get to the point where we genuinely are approaching it from that place of like, I genuinely just want the best for you. Like, not because you're going to say I helped you, not because you're going to feel that I helped you, but just because like, that's what love is expressed. Love expressed is just, I want the best for you. Whatever I can healthily do for you and whatever healthy way I can show up for you, I'm here. Don't hesitate to call me. You'll, I'll never mention it. Like, I'm just here. Not to be used, like, in this, like, derogatory way. But, like, we're all just doing that for each other. And I think the issue is that people who are more generous by nature have come up against people who are coming from the energy of, like, what can I get from you? And it makes you want to close off that energy because you don't, that's not the, that's not good either. But when you can get in those rooms with people and it's like, yeah, bro, I got that. You need it. Cool. Here you go. And you know that they'll reciprocate in whatever way, not like a tit for tat, but like, a, you know, I think you have to sit with yourself because the ego will come in so fast with like, why are they doing that? Like, why do they get to do that? Why am I not doing that? So to have gone through all of that a lot of those internal conversations where you've sat with that part of yourself and met it with love first I think is is maybe essential yes I love that so much and that is so beautiful and that's so real you know and I feel like this is especially you know like to whoever whoever's listening you know I feel like this is especially helpful because like as you go into like you know this it's like I feel like there's the spiritual journey and then there's like the actual awakening like not that 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 they're exclusive but you know the spiritual journey can mean a lot of things because there's a lot of stories and games and you know shiny things that you can kind of like so like one of those things one of those shiny things you can kind of maybe is is that is like you know it's like wanting to help people but you're doing it from a place of like well I want to increase my self-image versus like you know like you're saying like it's coming from an organic place and it and it's it's kind of easy in a way not easy in the sense that the ego will resist it but it's easy in the sense that it's just naturally it naturally pours from you and I think again like it all kind of comes like it a lot of it it all sort of originates um I don't know if I want to say originates but a lot of it comes I think too from the mind and just again being aware of like what your real intentions are I guess and you know where it's coming from yeah and I think we always we're as human beings like we all have blind spots but I feel like a tell for a blind spot is when you start projecting bad intentions on someone you're like ah they just they just want this (laughs) that's why they're doing that it's like oh wait a minute (laughs) what energy am I actually coming at this with because like where did I get that from? You know, it was up here. Like I'm like projecting right now. Um, and it's like always doing our best to hold enough space to like try to account for those blind spots. Cause we're always going to have them. And like, we're imperfect vessels and that's okay. Um, it's not okay to perpetuate harm. It's okay that we're going to show up imperfectly though, and that we're going to be learning and that we're going to be making mistakes and we're going to be correcting um, as time goes on. But I feel like something that I learned recently is just like, I I used to just say it very generally. Like I want to help people. Like when I was a kid, I just always said that I want to help people. And I realized I actually have to put some parameters on that for me that I want to help people who are in alignment with their highest good, or I want to help people um, be more in alignment with their highest good, but I actually don't want to help people 
to do just anything because sometimes what people want you to help them with are things that are destructive to themselves or destructive to other people or destructive to you. And I realized that I have to put parameters around that intention because when you put that beacon call out, like, I just want to help people like any and everybody can feel that. And people will, in a way, when you're putting that energy out, you can't really be mad that people are responding to it with like, well, I want you to, I'm going to try to manipulate you into doing this thing that just serves some like selfish limited agenda. And it's like, well, I was putting that energy out that I was just willing to help anybody do anything and then I was like, that's not my highest good. Like, I just felt so out of alignment. And I realized I'm going to have to go back to the drawing board with that intention because it's too general. I'm not, I don't want to be a neutral tool that people use for whatever it means. Money is like that. Money is an energy like that. Like money will be used for whatever. It's just there to serve. Like money will serve an agenda to build like an oil rig. Money will serve an agenda to end that oil rig. Like- <laughs> It's going to go to some something, it's going to go somewhere where it can be in service. It's like, I actually don't want to be like that. I have parameters. Um, so yeah, that came through for me recently. And it's actually a hard realization because I identify it so much with being a person who is like useful to other people and like a helper. And I was like, actually, I don't feel good about that identity and what it's doing to me. Yeah, dude, that's such a beautiful discernment. That really is such an amazing discernment. And I think it, it reminds me of um like it that's what I guess that's what I was trying to say when I say it originates in the mind. I guess it, it originates in the sight and like it's like helping us to have like correct um seeing, you know, and how we're seeing ourselves and seeing others and seeing the world like I feel like it really is that deep like in the deepest recesses of our mind to um instead of project our dreams on ourselves and each other to uh, and and this involves kind of like returning to to innocence but not in a naive way but in a genuine like Jesus Jesus Christ kind of way of like and this is also a practice, but like seeing the light of God in you and in others. Yeah. And it doesn't mean like you're controlling them or what they're doing, but you're through your awareness, because that's what I mean. Our mind is so potent. Just through your awareness alone, you're in a way holding space. And it, again, it doesn't mean you're putting yourself in harm's way, but you're just holding space for yourself and for others to, I want to say, make the right decisions. And all I mean by that is, is, healing the separation yeah you made me think of this quote <laughs> <laughs> I think that should be on my tombstone it made me think of this quote and that's the quote that's just what I say the most um <laughs> this is a James Baldwin quote he said the longer I live the more deeply I learn that love whether we call it friendship or family or romance is the work of mirroring and magnifying each other's light gentle work steadfast work life-saving work in those moments when life and shame and sorrow occlude our own light from our view but there is still a clear-eyed loving person to beam it back in our best moments we well getting emotional <laughs> that should be the second quote on my tombstone <laughs> in our best moments we are that person for one another Mm -hmm. so I just feel like what you're saying so strong I've been thinking about that too of like connect how do we connect with that like realist the realist part of someone which is that love which is that you know I believe that light in a person I believe people are ultimately good I don't believe that people are like terrible um at all I think people are good and they it just says there's this and I think it's related there's a separate it's like one in the same but layers that separation from God that separation from self separation from the love within there are all these layers to the same thing that come from the illusion like the illusion that here's something totally different from me and if I harm you it won't impact me at all or 
we can harm each other in in this side of the world and this other side of the world won't feel it at all won't impact their daily life we can pretend that it's not happening here but we'll feel it here we'll feel it in an like an anxiety a general sense of unease why am i depressed why don't i feel good why do i feel so bad why why maybe i should go for a run maybe i should drink a smoothie no you're feeling the pain of another human being or thousands of human beings who are suffering who you're related to who you're connected to whether you believe it or not you'll still know it in your heart in your body mic drop (laughs) (laughs) yeah so I think about that a lot like how do we you know like you said I think you were kind of hitting on we're so we're so attuned to like projecting this like negativity out Mm -hmm. I mean a lot of things that are I have I have a love-hate relationship with like Netflix because it's like they just put the most obscene things out there in the world of like let's focus on this serial killer now this one now these ones and like let's do documentary let's do another limited series let's do a movie it's like ah you know it's constantly putting in front of us like the worst aspects Mm -hmm. the worst things human beings can do which i feel like takes our focus away from like the inherent goodness i believe that is in everyone and the loving acts that happen the connection that happens we just don't see any of that we just see the worst of the worst so we treat each other with increased skepticism and like i'm not saying that we shouldn't be like human beings can be like (laughs) dangerous like the most dangerous thing on the planet i think you know but in in this weird way human beings can be like the most magical thing on the planet and i think it's largely like comes a full circle back to what you were talking about with our thoughts and what we feed and what we allow to grow inside of ourselves um it has a ripple effect outwards you know on the entire planet Damn. Yeah, that was, that's so beautiful. That is so real. It's making me think too of um, judge. What is it? Judge lest you be, do not judge lest you be judged. Yeah. Um, judge it, not. Yeah. Judge not lest you be judged. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, you can't judge someone else's reality without judging your own reality. And I guess what I want to say is and this humbled me again I got I read this in the book and it really made me think and it humbled me it's like every again even like the deepest like recesses of your mind like every impulse you have to attack your brothers and sisters you know is like it's kind of like a I think it's a projection of the dream and again it doesn't mean like like you said like just being aware but our I think our awareness is so powerful like when when we allow like the proper use of the mind like when we allow god and the holy spirit to like use our mind rather than us sort of like usurp all of that and cast our own dreams um allowing that light and awareness to shine really on it's like that's really i think the greatest service that we can do is like is like that's living in your light that's living in your spirit that's like you're embodying it and you're witnessing through your awareness allowing god to to shine into things and without putting your own dirty spells on it you know what I mean your own perceptions your own filters of like judgment or like any level of attack like we're so programmed to want to attack and all it does is attack ourselves and it's like it's this weird um like distortion like many distortions in the mind but it's definitely something to think about because then like and that's something the spiritual ego is totally it's like the spiritual ego is like even more judgmental than like the other ego it's like it's like look at this fucking like asshole like oh god how unmindful of them (laughs) yeah what is it different levels different devils like i think the biggest i think the i mean i could be wrong i'm really open to being to being wrong about things because i i'm always aware that i'm like I'm not finished like I'm not a finished product but like I think that's one of the biggest solutions is that as a human you will ever reach a point that your ego is like 
just not a factor like your ego's there and it's smart it kind of levels up like if you've ever played an AI, i know how you feel about ai so just just a warning i'm gonna mention ai now <laughs> like an ai video game where the every time you lose the villain like adapts to the things you did before it's like better prepared to yeah. evade your attacks and like it gets stronger it's yeah. like the ego is like that like the ego gets smarter about how it inserts itself like more subtle if it needs to be louder once it's really gotten you under its like hooks like it's a very smart I don't think we, we ever get to a point you, I don't think you ever fully will transcend your ego while you're in a human body like it's there it's like thinking you will not have a body and be a human being like it's there I yeah. think I could be wrong but I don't know and I think that's one of the big traps just people are like well I meditate all the time so my ego is like so dead bro <laughs> it's like no it's not it's not that's at all realistic. that's its greatest that's like the ego's greatest protection right there yeah it's like slipping under the cracks you're like being very like trying to be invisible but also influential it's crazy I think it's so interesting you bring up AI too because something about the ego is a lot like AI. It's like very like artificial intelligence, like the original AI. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, I think it really is in a way. Like that's such a great analogy because it's like it's a dream, right? It doesn't really exist. It doesn't operate in the same law of like God. I don't think it's like because God is just like truth, but then it's like ego. It's like all these conniving like binary like uh duality just like all these weird uh convoluted like just absolutely insane like programs <laughs> yeah it's interesting I really wish I like part of me wishes I could know like where does personality stop and ego start like what's the difference between ego and personality are they the same thing because if they are the same thing then I think your ego can evolve into something less aggressively narrow-minded but like it's always gonna have that tint to it so I don't think the personality is is the personality the ego you think I mean I would say at least similar but it doesn't mean it's bad I think it's just again like we don't it's like it, it, we don't really want that aspect to be driving our whole reality yeah I think I'm kind of attached to my personality. <laughs> beautiful, but like, I don't know, because God made us all unique on purpose, you know, with our unique gifts that like are all connected. So it's like, it is beautiful expressions of God, you know? Yeah, it, I think if I was, if I was to try to understand it, I feel like the ego is just like the, the double edged sword of the personality, like the personality shadow, so to speak, maybe. And <laughs> I don't know. It's like you, you take the good with the bad kind of thing. It's like, ah, there you go, you little devil. <laughs> <laughs> right. You little rascal. <laughs> yeah. Well, I feel we're at that point yeah. where it's always sad, but so at the same time, like so much fulfillment where I ask you any final thoughts, Reagan? I really feel so complete with that you know just like so much love to you and to everyone truly and in this like just totally amazing journey that we're on beautiful would you feel open to us holding like a minute of just like meditative contemplation where we're sending love out to anyone listening to the world just like to each other um or if you have other ideas about how that minute would go I'm open that would be my greatest joy. Amazing. You're really good at leading. I don't know if you feel like leading anything, but like if anyone's still listening, first of all, thank you. God this bless. was this was us unleashing the rusty pipes of the Breath of Fresh Air podcast. I loved the conversation. So good to, as always, hold this space with you. It's an honor. It's one of my favorite things I do with my life when we do it. <laughs> um but yeah if you're still listening and you feel led to kind of just join us in this moment of like sending out healing loving thoughts to yourself to 
maybe someone you have in mind, yeah, please do. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's so beautiful. It really is so powerful. It really is so powerful. Um, side note before that, just like something really beautiful, I think, was that um, Hurricane Milton is like, there was so much fear being pushed out about it. And I saw so many people pray in unity for that. And I feel like the results, that's something we got to see like collectively for anyone who's kind of like paying attention of like, the, the power of prayer and how much that, um, you know, really protected and came through. So that was just, you know, a really beautiful, I think, shining light of, of how much our awareness and our prayers really do influence everything. Yeah. Yeah. The power of prayer. I love that as an intention going into this moment and just holding that in our hearts, that knowing, you know, this, this, has, this does matter. Like it has an influence yeah yeah reagan take us away <laughs> oh my gosh yeah so we'll just take a moment to just breathe come to the heart soak in all of that all the love and joy and fun that we just got to play in and we're going to take another moment to just be very aware of like we don't need to chase any anything outside of us right now just come back within and feel however that is for you just feel that light of god feel that presence feel that love feel that aliveness that wholeness that divine inheritance just tap into it as much as you can just let it permeate your mind and your body your field And when you feel ready, also just sending it out to all of humanity, all of life, all of creation, all beings that are open to receiving this love. Asking God, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus to assist us in seeing and removing all the conditions that keep us in fear and separated. Healing our minds, healing our lives. restoring the holiness that is and, and always was into our awareness. Only perfect love exists. giving us the assistance we need to awaken from the nightmares we're ready to awaken from. Thank you. And so it is. Thank you, Reagan. That was amazing. So much love to you, Reagan. So much love to anyone listening. On that note, I'm Bianca. I'm Reagan. And this has been breath of fresh air amazing <laughs>